Hi, it's Craig and Richard here for the first of our uh, weekly feedback videos. And great to be with you all again uh, for our repeat learners, but uh, welcome to all our new learners. And uh, it's tremendous. So many people from all around the world. And a big welcome to those uh, uh, Spanish-speaking learners as well. Now, just to remember, of course, that English is the specified language for the course. But we do have a lot of learners from the Spanish-speaking world. Yep. And uh, so transcripts are being provided in the Spanish language. So uh, welcome to you as well. But please uh, contribute to the forums in English so yeah. we can... So you have everybody accessing them. Yeah. yeah. So lots of interesting topics this week. Um, yes. Firstly, default mode. Everybody's <laughs> favourite. Everybody's <laughs> favourite because we spend at least half of our lives not paying attention to what we're doing. And often we don't even notice that's happening. But mm. then all of a sudden in a course like this, we start to realise it. Yeah. And it's a, it's a huge realisation for a lot of people to just start noticing how much of the time we're distracted, yeah. how much of the time the attention's getting caught up in worrying and pointless kind of thinking. And the thing when we notice that distractibility of the mind, that's a sign of progress, but also not to kind of chase the mind. I, I think dog metaphors are good for the mind. And, you know, if you try, try to sort of run after this distracted mind, and it's like running after a dog with a ball in its mouth, it just always keeps running ahead of us. So the thing is to just be still, just notice, minds run off again, be still, just reconnect with your senses. And, uh, Pretty soon the, the dog drops the ball at your feet. <laughs> <laughs> and it's interesting as well how, how a lot of learners notice that their mind wanders while watching the videos on mind wandering. Yeah. And that's just perfectly ironic, but yeah. it's as good a time as any to notice that the mind's wandered off and we're not actually paying attention. Yeah, and a little trap too when we're trying to practice mindfulness is that we notice that the mind's wandering again into default mode. And when we notice it, <clears throat> the next thing that happens is the mind goes into, oh, why do I keep going into default mode? What's wrong with me? When is this going to stop? And that's just I, another just form. More default mode. More default mode. And the thing is just to notice, oh, there's the mind doing it again. The mind talking to itself about being mindful, and that's not mindful either. So just drop that too and just come back to where you are. That's right. And of course, we provide transcripts. So while people are watching the videos, should they also be reading or should they be focusing on the videos? What have you got to say about that? Well, I think just listen. Um, and you can read the transcript later on to reinforce things, but just listen. Um, and just see it as an exercise in just listening and just being mindful. And then maybe, I think too, uh, that notes and so on, we get preoccupied about information and detail. And it's more to get the, the, the concept and the feel of it. And yeah. for that, just listening. When you want really, really fine detail, then notes and go back and read the extra points, etc. But just yeah. try and get the sort of the feel, the, the, the concept first. And even learning to pay attention to the entire video without getting distracted would mm. actually be a pretty good mindfulness practice and a good outcome from the course. Yeah. Now, now we've course, had one or two people noticing that um, about catastrophizing. Well, it's, who would have thought? Who would have thought, right? <laughs> I mean, and it's not just that the mind wanders and we miss what's happening. I mean, that, that would be a problem in and of itself. But when the mind wanders, it loves finding problems. Mm. It's got a negativity bias and it just loves finding and grabbing hold of problems. getting Creating caught up in, problems. Cr or cr exactly right. Cr cr catastrophizing, creating problems that haven't even happened. Mm. And I guess just to notice that is the first step, isn't mm. it? To become aware that, hang on a sec, this is actually creating a stress response, a fight and flight response in my body when I'm worrying about that exam, deadline, difficult conversation, whatever it is, or dwelling on that thing mm. that happened. And so as we start to notice that, there's the possibility of coming out of that, bringing our attention back to what is mm. rather than what if. And, and a yeah. lot of our learners really like that idea of focusing on what is. Yes. I can remember one um, lady in a program I was running and she'd had anxiety for many, many years. And she was initially trying to use mindfulness to, to stop the mind worrying, to get rid of those worrying thoughts. And what she noticed was that, um, of course, that often just accentuates it because we have conversations about why can't I stop worrying. But one time she stopped trying to get rid of those thoughts and she's just kind of observed the mind thinking, the catastrophizing, the worrying. And noticed how repetitive and cyclical it was, just over and over the same old thing. And this was towards the end of the course and she said, she just got so uninterested in the mind worrying all the time. She said, I think I've bored myself out of anxiety. <laughs> I thought it was, it was very That's insightful. Priceless. Yeah. 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 Look, and a lot of our learners have noticed as well that when they're meditating or working or studying, that's when things pop into their mind that they've suddenly yeah. remembered they have to do or and, and should they then go and do that thing or should they try to let it go? I think a good strategy is to actually write it down. Not mm -hmm. obviously to use meditation as a brainstorming session, mm -hmm. but I have a pad where I meditate at home. 
And if an idea pops into my head, because all of a sudden my mind's gotten a bit quiet, and when we clear the cache of the short-term memory, which has a limited capacity, you know, we normally keep that just stuffed with information. But when we meditate or when we go for a walk in nature or do something mindfully, the cache clears and all of a sudden that information pops up from the, you know, mm. from the hard drive and we suddenly remember something that we needed to do. Or an insightful um, that, solution to yes. something that, and all the overthinking has actually been crowding it out and yep. we create some space and it pops up. Yeah. So writing it down gets it out of the short-term memory onto the paper and then we can go back to the meditation or whatever task we're mm. doing and come back to it later. I think that's a pretty good strategy. Yeah. yeah. Just in terms of memory, a lot of people worry about memory, but the number one thing in memory is attention. Yes. If we're really paying attention, we remember things in a kind of an effortless way. When we're overthinking things, worrying and churning and so on, that's when we forget. That's all the default mode and it crowds out the thing that we need to remember at the right moment. So yeah. practice attention and let the memory look after itself in a, in a sense. Um, also, um, uh, daydreaming and positive daydreaming. Um, and in a, in a kind of a way, what's to get curious about what's behind the going into positive daydreams. Are we trying to create a kind of a happiness when at the end of the day, if it's on a daydream, then it doesn't actually have a real substance to it because the daydream dissolves and we're just back where we were before. So there's a kind of subtle dissatisfaction that can be created by always realizing that the world we cook up in our brain is not the world that we're living in. So from a mindfulness perspective, we learn to be at peace with, at one with, yeah. connected with, able to be happy with the world that actually is. And I think that trying to get happiness out of daydreaming is a little bit like being thirsty and trying to imagine ourselves drinking and um, and uh, and finding that it's not quenching our <laughs> thirst. Yeah. And, and the daydreaming for creativity as well, that the default circuits are involved in the creative process, but when we're doing that mindfully, and this comes up later in later uh, material, but uh, the executive functioning circuits are active at the same time yeah. if we're doing it mindfully. And in a sense, I think that's mind engaging with the creative process, not mind distracted. So that's sort of creative problem solving rather than, or creative, you know, thinking yeah. rather than just getting lost in default mode. That's right, yeah. which is the mind distracted. Yeah. Now, of course, because of these habits, of being distracted, we need to train the mind. Hmm. And one of the most effective ways of doing that is to meditate. And so a lot of our learners yeah. have started experimenting with the, the calmer meditation, the shorter meditations, the body scan, yeah. and finding them really helpful. Because hmm. the moment we do that, two things happen. We start to train the mind and strengthen those executive function hmm. circuits, and we become more aware of how much the mind's wandering and getting caught up in all of that stuff, mm -hmm. which again is a very uh, a powerful thing to practice. That's right. And noticing how when we, we practice that more often, the, the frequency with which we practice the formal practice, longer or shorter forms, the easier it makes for us to be mindful when we get yes. on with life. Yeah. Big question, important question uh, has come up too about to itch or not to itch you <laughs> know, during the meditation the practice. Question. Well, it happens, doesn't it? Well, it yeah. does. Now, you got to, now, if you decide to scratch, then scratch and you just observe the waves of relief that just sort of <laughs> flow throughout the body and so on. And, that, and that's just a mindful thing in itself. Or you decide not to itch, in which case you observe waves of intense impulse control and so on. It's just like trying not to itch and you just, and that's black belt mindfulness, to sit Indeed. with an itch yep. and not to scratch. So you just decide for yourself what you're going to do. <laughs> They're both useful practices. <laughs> yeah. So obviously, look, establishing that routine, really useful thing to do. Mm. Probably the number one tip, I think, is to tie it in with an existing part of our routine. That seems to be the thing that really yeah. helps people meditate. So whether it's, mm. you know, doing it before breakfast or mm. before bed or at some time during the day, mm. that seems to be a very good way of actually uh, yeah. establishing the practice. Yeah. All right, so it's been a great week and um, thank you for all your input. We look forward to reading more comments in coming weeks. And just to note a couple of other things just in closing as well. If dealing with any really serious physical or mental health issues, this course might be useful and supportive, but please make sure you seek the help of a, a well-trained health professional. Um, also, we'll be coming up uh, to speak about um, multitasking and procrastination in coming weeks. Um, please also take your time through the course. It's a four-week course and just really consolidate each week before going on to the next week is generally the best way to go rather than just going through the whole program in, in one step. So just really take it week by week so you consolidate learning. Yeah, it's experiential. So do the exercise yeah. and do the practices and pay attention to what 
to, to what we're covering. Yeah. Follow the mentors as well so yeah. that you see all of their comments. Make sure you do that. Yeah. And, and next week we'll be looking at uh, mindful stress reduction, uh, cultivating gentleness and curiosity, and looking more at mindfulness and everyday activities. Have so a great week. We'll see you next week.